good day. I'm good. Uh, I kind of got tossed up here this morning. I was kind of prepared. So we're just going to try this out. We'll, uh, we'll start as Jason always does. Has anybody got any nudges or testimonies this week? No? Pretty quiet? Well, I do. I uh, went Friday and made me up a sign. I felt like the Holy Spirit really nudged me to make up a sign and go stand out in public. And my sign said, I would really love to hear what Jesus has done in your life. And I went out and I stood out by Wayne Lee's for two and a half hours, something like that. And uh, thought it was real fun because the first person that talked to me told me all about how nobody was going to ask me if somebody had talked to me yet. And I said no. And they told me all about how nobody was going to talk to me because the town's full of hypocrites and mean people and all that. And there's just, I was wasting my time sitting out there. And I told her that I was fine with sitting out there because it was showing, for me, it was showing obedience. I know that I know that I heard the Holy Spirit tell me to do what I was doing. And I know that I was out there for a reason. I wasn't sure why yet, but I knew I was out there for something. And she continued to tell me that I was not doing right, that nobody was going to talk to me, and, and why would somebody come stand out there like that. And I told her again, I said, if only one person reads my sign and it reminds them of the things that God's done in their life, then that's why I was here. That showed our conversation down. She said, I had a very interesting way of looking at things, and she didn't want to talk to me no more. <laughs> and I said, that was fine. Well, I had, a, I had a young man up there named James that came up to me, and uh, he eventually came up, young, 18 years old, trying to figure out his life. And he said that, uh, that God's done a lot for him in his life. I asked him to you know, elaborate a little bit for me. Tell me something. He said that, God's the only reason he's here on this earth. I said, okay, I'd really like to know how. He said that years ago, his granddad was diagnosed with polio. His granddad wasn't supposed to live. Definitely wasn't supposed to have kids. And his granddad wanted to live. He died many years after he got diagnosed, had children, had this young man's mother. Uh, when his mother, he said when his mother was born, that she was born stillborn. But by the grace of God, God had brought her back to life as an infant there in the hospital. And had not been for all them events of God stepping in, he wouldn't be here today. And then proceeded to tell me about just recently overcoming family members shooting at him and missing with every shot. And I let him, I let him know, you know God, God told me to let him know that he's got a purpose for him. He really does, I mean, there, there's no way that there's no way our Lord would correct events as they go and save his granddad and bring his stillborn mother back to life just to have him, for him to survive, not even being hit with a round. You know, there's, there's definitely some purpose in his life. And I tell you guys all that because it made me feel really good to, to stand there and hear other people tell me how good God's been to them. And I had a few others stop and, and he'll tell me some things that God's done for them in their life, and it was it was wonderful. It filled me up with so much happiness just to hear how God is still pushing through in this world. He's still going through, and He's still touching hearts. I mean, He's as crazy as the world's getting, and He still is. <clears throat> I kind of got shot up here real quick today, but I've had this message on my mind for a little bit now. I just haven't haven't had an opportunity to stand up and do it. So maybe today was my day. Is you know just being kind to other people. Even, even people that are the worst to you, you know, that, that lady sat there and did nothing but belittle me and tell me how I was not going to make a difference and I wasn't going to do anything by standing out there, but I really feel like I did a lot. Uh, just, just being there, I've seen plenty of people walk by and, and read the sign and you see the glow hit them again, you know, so I know God reminded them of the things that they've done in their lives. You know, uh, I really, you know, y'all, y'all know now by me, by now with me, that I really like seeing people happy. I'll, I'll do just about anything I can 
to see other people smile, and it's it's amazing. You know, uh, through the through the word here in Ephesians four thirty two, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgive one another as God in Christ forgave you. You know, even even the people that are the most condemning to us, even the people that are the most you know um, hard on us. You know, forgive them. They may not accept it. They may, they may throw it right back in your face and tell you that you're still doing wrong, that you're, you're not going to make a difference. But forgiving them and letting them know that you love them, you know, and uh, the tenderhearted, that, come, that comes with it. We have, we, have to, we have to be easy on people, you know, and the tenderhearted helps us, helps us take it better, too. If we stay hard-hearted, then we're going to hear them negative things, and it's just going to resonate back out of us negative. Uh, we just being tender-hearted is has turned to be so much better value in my life than any of the cold-hearted stuff I've ever thought I'm not. Being kind has filled me up so much more than any of the negatives that I've seen out in the world, and I, I love it. I'm sure everybody here can think of times that. You know, we should have been a little more tenderhearted and we weren't, and how we felt afterwards. You feel guilty. You feel sad that you that you said the things you did or did the things you did. You know, and that's, I think that's God, you know, letting us know that we're not supposed to be that way. We're supposed to be nice. We're supposed to love everybody. You know, as hard as it is some days, you know, just love everybody the way, the way that, you know, Christ our Father loved us. He came and he died for us. He gave up for us willingly. You know, it's, it's amazing to, to feel. You know, uh, I'm kind of jumping around in the book, but Luke 6, 27 says, uh, But I say unto you who hear, love your enemies, do, uh, was it, do sound to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. You know, it's... Bless those who curse you. You know, just uh, actually not holding that and holding the resentment for them. You know, that and really blessing them. Not just... Not just saying, you know, bless you because, you know, we feel like we're supposed to. Because, you know, us as Christians, we're supposed to just say, bless you, I love you, you know, but mean it, feel it, mean it. Honestly, feel it down in you and mean that, that you want to you wanna bless their lives. You know, stop, take a second, sit down in, in your car or when you get home or whatever and say a prayer for them, you know, bless them. Hope good things on their life. Ask God to put good things in their life. You know, the God can He can change even the hardest of hearts. Uh, he's shown that time and time and time again. You know, uh, pray for those who abuse you. That's that's difficult sometimes because us us as humans, you know, when we get abused, we we hold that. We don't. We definitely don't want to let go of that. It's. It's hard to see somebody that hurts you so badly, either mentally, physically, or emotionally, and try to try to bless them, try to forgive them. You know, but imagine what Christ went through. Think what He went through when when we, man, us as a human race, we we did everything to Him. We hunted Him down. You know, we, we persecuted. Him. We we stoned His followers. You know. We we beat him mercilessly before we come, before we hung him on the cross, you know, and he still forgave every one of us all the way to the end of time. He's still forgiving us, you know. If not for all that forgiveness, we wouldn't we wouldn't have a place to be. And when the when the end comes, we wouldn't we wouldn't get to see his his glory and his majesty when he comes. And I for, I for one am ready for that. I mean, I'm not ready to go just yet, but I'm definitely ready to see the glory and the skies come open and him come down and tell me, you know, good job. 
The world's getting so, so crazy, and it's so easy to fall into the traps of the world, and just, it's easy to dismiss people. It's easy to, uh, uh, they, they hurt me, or I don't like what they have to say, and so just forget them, you know? But I, I remind everybody, don't just forget them. Pray for them. Pray for them honestly, earnestly, like with, not just because you think that you can just say a quick prayer and like, you know, God, you know, bless them, help them, and thank you. Run on. Mean it. Mean it. Feel it. You know, it's, uh, it'll do, it'll do us good. It'll do, it does, I mean, it does me good all the time when I sit down and <clears throat> honestly put time and thought into the people that have bothered me and hurt me and harmed me. Give them some prayer, give them some thought. You know, I've I've recently been surprising a lot of people in my life that have seen me be ugly in the past and write them off and not not do anything. And I find myself calling them still, text messages, whatever I can, remind them that I love them, God loves them. I've had a, I've had two of them stop and ask me why, why. I do. I love you. We never had before. Something's changed in me. I follow Christ. I'm following Christ. And I'm doing the best I can to, to be an example. To, to not just lead by example for my family, but just lead, lead by example in, in, our, in our Christian faith. Is that we need to. We need to forgive. Not, not just forget, but forgive. Forgetting is easy. Forgetting, we just forget about it and don't do anything about it. Like I said, actually, honestly forgiving, that's difficult. It's really difficult at times. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 4 and 7 says, uh, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not it does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love love is definitely not <clears throat> arrogant or rude, and that's that's a lot, I think a lot of people feel that Christians are arrogant and boastful, but we need to we need to show them that we're not, and just that we love. And just like I keep saying, honestly, seriously, just just love. You know, I'm not trying to boast to anybody about the things that 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 uh, that I do. I just telling you honestly that I'm, I'm working on it myself too. I really do try to love everybody, even even when they're telling me that I'm not doing right and I'm not ever going to make a difference. And it's It makes it difficult. It, gets, it makes us hard on ourselves when we get told that. When we get told that you're no reason to do this, why? You've always been screwed. Why are you doing this? You know, you've, you've, you've always, you've never loved anybody. Why? Why? You know, you. It's different me. It's a new me. It's since Christ saved me. Since I finally, fully committed and realized what all Christ has done for us. How it's changed my not just my heart but my mind, my whole being. You know, we still we're still human. We still have them times in ourselves where we're going to feel that anger creep up in us, and we're going to feel that resentfulness for somebody else creep in us. You know, and that's what we need to stop. We need to pray for ourselves. We need to pray for God to come to us, Christ to fill us again with the Holy Spirit, and remind us that that's it's not that's not who He wants us to be. He wants us to be the all loving. 
all forgiven, just just as He is. You know, um, rude is pretty much the norm of the, of the times right now. Uh, I, st I get it every all time when I go out. You know, you always see people that are in a hurry or they're you know they don't want to talk. They don't want to say hi. They you know they push past. They cut you off in the in the line to get gas or or, what, or whatever whatever you know just rude is the is the love language of the time and we're called to be different we're called to stand apart to stand out and uh, to show that that's not how we have to be and that's that's not how you know I hate to say you know, not hate to say it but it's not how Christians are supposed to be you know Christians as followers of Christ. That's, that's exactly what we are. Christ wants us to be nice. He wants us to forgive. He definitely doesn't want us to be rude and, and, and hateful to everybody. You know, uh, what is this? Do not rejoice in the wrongdoings, but rejoice in the truth. I think that's another thing that we're, that the world is really doing anymore is rejoicing in the wrongdoings. They're so happy to get their way to win. That's, that's all we're worried about is winning. I won, I won the argument. I won the battle. Uh, I won, I won, I won. But at what cost? Well, what cost did we win? We, we, we won, but we may have won the argument, but how you won that argument, you lost something. You, you lost some peace. You lost some love that you could have gave. The person that you that you won against, they lost. They lost in the love that they could have received from you. It's uh, it's difficult, and I I for one also also know that loving everybody is difficult because not everybody wants to be loved. Not everybody wants wants it. They want they like being rude. They like being mean. They they you know they win. As far as they're concerned, they win. But I do like when people stop me and say, there's something different about you. What's different? I can tell them. I can see it. You don't do these things. You don't do them things. You know? There's something different. But what is it? And that's when we have an opportunity to witness. That's when we have the opportunity to let them know why we're different, how we're different. Christ has made me different. He's made us all different. He wants us all to be better than, than the world. He don't want us to be like the world at all. He wants us to be better than the world, but more like Him. So following the worldly things, is just that's what makes us arrogant and, and mean and bitter. You know, so again, prayer. Prayer. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to come. Ask Him to show up to you. Ask Him to Ask him to show you. And he will. He will. If you're if you're if you're honest in your asking and in your request, he will show up and he will he will definitely fill you with some peace. And my problem I have with that is the quieting of the mind so you can hear it. My mind runs all the time. All the time. Got five kids. Got this to do, that to do, phone rings all the time, cars to work on, motorcycles to work on, always doing something. So it's hard to it's hard to quiet my mind enough sometimes for me to feel like I actually hear the spirit talking to me. I was uh, I was talking with Miss Sue not too long ago and said that to her is that I said, that's 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 one of the hard ones for me is just getting my mind to quiet enough. And she said, I think that's everybody. I think everybody is, is that's we're so we're getting trained with cell phones and, and immediate gratification and everything that if, if it's not immediate gratification we just time to tend to dismiss it and go on you know but the spirit will come he will come and he'll talk to you but sometimes it ain't gonna be sometimes it is immediate sometimes as soon as you ask and you talk you you know, if you if you're ready, 
You can hear it. You know what he's. You know what he's saying. As long as we don't dismiss it. Sometimes, sometimes he wants us to be quiet. He wants us to sit in the quiet of him and listen. Because he's not going to scream it at us. That's for sure. He's definitely not going to stop and bang the drums and holler at you and tell you you listen. He's just going to talk. If you miss it, you miss it. You got to talk. You got you to listen. And I, uh, I find it hard, but it's, it's gratifying when you finally do. And you know that you know that that you know that this is what you're supposed to be doing because you know that God told you, hey, go do it. I, uh, I don't have like 17 pages of notes like Miss Kim. Uh, um, she she'll write it all down forever. It's great. I love it. You know uh, Proverbs 12:25 is uh, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but good, but a good word makes him glad. You know, it kind of goes right on with what I was saying is, you know, when we, when we live in the world and we live with the, the quick pace and, and the quick gratification, we get anxious. And we, or we want it so fast right now that we get, we get anxious and ready for it. And we're, you know, like everybody fills us up with so much stuff that we get, we get anxiety waiting to hear good news and hear something good, you know, and, uh, Jason was the one, I, I'm pretty sure he said it in front of us too, but he said it to me a bunch now, is that, you know, when we get, we get irritated and we get anxious and things like that, in order to hold on to that feeling, you got to set Christ down for a second. Because you can't, you can't have them worried and anxious and mad and all that and, and hang on to Christ at the same time. you gotta, you got to grab one another because Christ doesn't live with all that. All, the, all that's not of him. You know, but if but if you'll set it all down, then you know the good word makes us glad. And when, when we hold good, you know that's when we can hold Christ. And that's when we can have Him and we feel Him running through us. You know, because uh, that's what He is. He's He's good and love, patience, tolerance, joy. You know, we 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 can't ha we can't feel all of that when we're hanging on to worry and anxiety and stress and anger and, and, and any of that so we, you know i i encourage everybody you know just as jason encourages me regularly too is to you know set all set your worries aside set your anxiety down set set them irritated feelings down and and the mad and all that and, you know set it set it down pick christ back up Pick him up and talk to him. He will definitely help you work through all that. He will definitely help all that ease away and, and uh, fill you fill you with joy and happiness and love, love for others. You know? uh, I think what's one of, the, one of the famous things a lot of people hear is do unto others as you want them to do unto you. That's man. It's, there's a lot of there's a lot of truth in that for me. I don't want other people to scream at me. I don't want other people to to slap on me or hit on me or, or be resentful of me or anything like that. So for for that, you know, it's we got to make sure that we're not doing that to others. Because again, it just that's not part of that's not part of Christ. That's not part of what He wants from us. You know, it's really, I tell everybody too, uh, my hardest place is at home. My wife can irritate me faster than anybody, you know. Uh, but we've done really good. We, 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 found, we found a good place to be able to set it down and remind ourselves to, to, to sit down and talk with God and pray, you know, like, even even though that's my hardest place at home, like my kids, I like my house to be a certain way. But even at that, I'm not really the ruler of my house. You know, God is. I, I make the make the 
simple rules at the house, but God makes the, the ultimate rules, and He's got to, because He's got. If He doesn't, I'll, I'll get a little crazy. I, I'll, I like to, uh, I like to make sure that everybody does what I say and, and the way I like it, you know. But we got to be. We gotta be more like God, cause He wants us to do what He says, but He doesn't make us. He doesn't scream at us and yell at us, and slap on us or anything like that to make us do it. He, he's He's tells us whether we do it, we do it. But when we don't, we find out why we should have done it real quick. It all comes back usually eventually. To, it reminds us exactly why we probably shouldn't have done that. You know, so. Uh, that's kind of kind of a quick, short message, but I just love love everybody. You know, uh, remind remind them people that 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 are hard on you and don't want to uh, don't want to be nice to you and don't want to you know belittle you or anything like that. Remind them that you love them. Honestly, like, you know. If, can't, if you can't love them, talk to God. Talk to the Spirit. See, ask Him to come to you. Ask Him to come fill up your life because He will. And when He does, next thing you know, you'll like. I, I actually do. It doesn't bother me anymore. You know, the, you know, loving somebody and entertaining somebody are two totally different things. I think. You know, you you can love them. You want the best for them. They don't want. They don't want the best for you. It doesn't necessarily mean that you gotta entertain them every day of the week. But remind them that you love them. I think because eventually they're gonna want to know why you keep doing it. I know that I have at, at least one person right now that every time I message them and ask and tell them I love them and check on them, see how their day's going. Here recently, they've been asking me, "Why are you doing?" Because I worry about you. I know, but I've been so mean to you. But I still love you. I want the best for you. I want you to do good things. I want good things to happen to you. You know, and then they don't necessarily want good things to happen. But that's that's not for me to control. That's for God to control. You know, uh, so we just we just remind them that we love them. We remind them that we want the best for them. We let them know that. That God's here for them. And go back to, like I said, the lady, you know, where I stood out in town. Told me, that ain't nobody going to talk to you. There's, you're, you're wasting your time. There's no reason for you to be out here. This town doesn't want to hear it. I disagree. I think they do. I think they really do want to hear it. They just don't know how yet. They're, they're, they're learning like I am. They, they want to hear it. But they're so busy in their own lives. They're so busy in their own world that they don't know how to take it right now. So it's up to it's up to us as Christians to keep pushing it on to the point of reminding them that we love them. Just remind them that there are people out there that love them for no reason. For no reason, but I love them. You know, they, you'll see the more that you the more you add that to people, the more that you add that into your life. You'll see you feeling happy. You'll 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 not be near as bitter when people do things to you. You know, you just remind them that you love them. Like I said, pray, pray, pray for them. You, they, not everybody's gonna let you pray for them right there on the spot. Uh, that, that kid James asked me to pray for him. That's the first time I have probably ever in my life had somebody ask me to pray for them. I I went home. Just walking on clouds. It was it was amazing. Hey, somebody out there wanted me to pray for them. Merely because I had a sign that asked, What has God done for you? What has Jesus done for you in your life? And by the time the end of our conversation I asked if I could pray for them. That's amazing for me. That was a huge deal. I let him know that he made my night. And he couldn't believe that. He's me. I said, yeah, you you made my whole night. You made me stand up here 
you made my whole night all worth it. Don't be scared sometimes to put yourself out there and, and remind people that you love them. <coughs> they want to hear it. Sometimes they don't think they do. They, they think you're crazy. But they want to hear it. Everybody wants to be told they're loved. Honestly told they're loved. Not sarcastically. Just honestly. I love I do. I keep finding myself I love. I love everybody. I really do. I, I don't I say I don't know why, but Christ has filled me up so much that I definitely do. I definitely I love everybody. I haven't since I since I've come back and I've got baptized and put myself into it, I haven't ran into a single person or talked to a single person that I don't generally just love. I have no ill feelings towards them, just love them. And it's amazing. It makes it makes quick disagreements go away so much faster. It makes people being ugly to you not hold in you. Or you just go home and now you're ugly to your family or your friends because somebody else was ugly to you. You know, it just melts away off of you. And you just remind them. Remind them that, that <coughs> there's better ways. Even if you have to do it by example. That's, that's how I'm learning how to do it is by example. I don't... I don't really know any other way to do it, but by example. But, uh, I see you out here now, Kim. You got anything else you want to add to all this? Don't hit me. Well, I said I don't have a big long notes and pages like Kim does, but we'll make it shorter, short and sweet. Can you grab my notes real quick if you want to read them? I They're thought, right here. I thought <laughs> about it. It's easy today. Here you go. <laughs> It's easy today. Flashcards. Oh, she's got flashcards. <laughs> I'll just make sure I remember, huh? Abandonment and broken? Oh, on the other side. It was, it was basically, I, I felt oh. like, you know, the whole message today was supposed you. to be about, like, your identity and not believing the lies of the enemy. You know, but... You feel broken when you have the scripture from the back and kind of like, anyway. Yeah. What you had was obviously what the Lord wanted. I guess. I think so. But as I said, just, uh, just love. Just love. That's what, that's what He wants from us. That's what we need to do. It's, I said, it's a difficult thing to do sometimes. It seems difficult. But the more and more you do it, the more and more you practice, the more and more you go out and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you up with love so that way you can fill others up with love. It, it will happen. It will come. It, you'll, you'll see it. You'll feel it in your own self. And for me, the more it happens, the more I'm able to remind complete strangers that I love them, and the more I'm actually able to show, not just, just say it, but show complete strangers that I love them, the more I get filled up. You know, I don't, I'm not saying you won't get filled up anyways, but for me, it's, it's not, it's not that I get filled up and then go do it. It's the more I go and do it, the more I go and show complete strangers I love them, the more I go and, and, and spread happiness and joy and positivity because of that, the better I feel, the more it fills me up with all these things. You know, and I've seen it happen with me in reverse too. So I like this part of me so much more. This is such a better side. You know, we I, call it the upside down kingdom, but like, you know, in his kingdom, it doesn't make sense that when you, you give something away, as you give stuff away, you get stuff, you know, like, because everything about him is like, it, it just seems like it's completely backwards. You give to receive, that makes no sense. It, but in the natural, like you don't give, if you give something away, then you are less that thing. But when you give something away in the kingdom, you receive something, you know, it's like so much more. And that's one of those kind of things that like, as you like are out there and you're loving people, for one, you feel so loved in return. So yes. love, not, not necessarily from them, but from the Father, you know, because it, that's how his kingdom works. Yes. 
it, you're right, upside upside down. I like that. But yeah, it's like Kim said, the more the more you give, the more you give. And sometimes you sometimes you gotta know that you you're not expecting nothing in return from them. And absolutely nothing. Like, like I said, sometimes you give out love and get back hate from them. But later I feel so much fuller with joy and peace and love even when I get the hate back from people. So I just continue. I just continue to to be happy and continue to spread love and continue to spread as much peace and tolerance, I guess, as I can. You know, I, I don't know if tolerance is the right word, but just abundant joy. You know, I've, I've walked around with a smile on my face more in the last year, year and a half than I have probably in my whole 40 years. And I, I absolutely love it. I don't really have right, anything else. You weren't exactly planning on doing a service today. Right. I, was, I wasn't exactly, but, you know, it happens. You ready in season and out. Yeah, that's it. Aaron threw me into it. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Anyways, uh, we will uh, go in with some prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today thank you for everybody in this room thank you for all the hearts that that are here just to worship you lord i pray that you fill everybody here with your holy spirit show them all your abundant love that you have lord go home with them show them how to go out and spread love to everybody Help complete strangers. Just show them that you are good. You are gracious. You are mighty. You can take all bad situations and make them good again. You can turn all hearts and minds for you, Lord. Let everybody know that just the world may be crazy, but you are great and you are good. If they will come to you and talk with you, you can you can help with everything. But I want you to bless each and everybody here. I want you to just hold them all in your embrace. Let them know that it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We will all come together. We will all worship you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you do, everything that you have done, and everything that you will do. In Jesus' name.